Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, and in a few upcoming videos, I want to chat to you about the overall approach I take when creating an animated film. And this will be focused on making animations on my own, not in a production pipeline. I think it's important to mention that a one-man band type creation most likely would be very different from a collaborative project between a lot of people. But we will get to that later. I will in this first episode go over the pre-production process that I take. Currently I'm creating an animated film under the working title of Obsession. You can see a lot of my videos here are about the creation of individual shots for it. But before I started working on this film, I'd already made quite a few other similar projects. Not to the same scale, but with each film I learned something I could apply and improve on for the next. I think that's an important lesson I learned over the years and I often get the question from people saying you know they love animation and they want to create their own film but they don't know where to start. I think we have a tendency to want to go straight on to the big feature length project and create that dream idea we have. But if this is your first animated project then make sure it's something you can do in a very doable time frame. I think one of the best ways to learn all the steps of of filmmaking is to actually create your own projects, but make sure you can actually finish it. I've started projects I had loads of grand ideas for uh, that then never saw the light of day because they were basically too large a scale for me to pull off. You can still learn from those, but I think not having a product at the end of the day kind of sucks when you put a lot of work into it. Therefore, it's a good idea to make sure you gradually build up your experience by creating many small projects that you actually finish. It can be a sequence of let's say three shots that sets the mood for a scene or introduces a character for example. Make sure you can finish it relatively quickly and once it's done move on to the next. That way you quickly build a portfolio of animated sequences that each will have its obstacles to tackle and learn from and at the same time you are not overwhelmed by the fact that your project seems to be miles away from being finished. When I say they should be something you can finish quickly, I don't mean they should be sloppy or rushed, of course. They also don't have to be random without a story. You can still tell a story within a few shots. They could also just be in a simpler style that maybe allows you to create shots faster. Before I created my film Sensations, I wanted to see where my level was and how I could push it further. I wanted to explore methods I could use when I eventually start working on the film. I set myself a deadline of one week to create a short sequence containing characters and backgrounds. This was the end result, and I think this was one of the first time I actually started painting over my 3D renders, which you see me do a lot nowadays. So I learned something, and I could then feel more confident jumping on to the next project. So these are tips for someone who just started out creating their own work. But moving on, let's say I feel ready to commit to a larger project. What are the steps I take to get going? Do I spend a lot of time in pre-production? Well, I think it definitely has its place and for any film project, the story should be the number one thing to focus on. I would not start production on a film today without having a clear direction on what the story is about and how it would play out. So my first step in the development of a new film is to write. To me, this is probably the most exciting time in the process you know, all the doors are open and I can explore the subjects that interest me. My number one tip when it comes to writing scripts is to write about just that, what interests you. There's always a story to be told with any subject, but make sure that the subject is something that you find exciting. That way you already sit on a lot of information on that topic and it also keeps you motivated to work on the project down the line. My current film is about two athlete climbers and their physical and mental journey. I am myself an avid climber, obsessed with the sport, so it makes it easy for me to dive into details and build a world and story around it. When writing, I like to cut out any possibilities to get distracted, so leaving the house and office works best for me. Sitting in a cafe somewhere has proven to be the best place for me to get into the headspace of writing. Going back home without having written anything would feel incredibly disappointing. So this is a good way to force my old brain into being productive. 
if I try to write from home, I tend to forgive myself for, you know, shifting my focus onto something else, meaning the story never gets written. Once I get into the flow, I'm usually able to write a full short film in, let's say, one or two sittings. It might not end up being the one I eventually want to create, but after doing that a few times, there's usually a story that gets stuck with me that I can't stop thinking of. If the excitement for it doesn't fade, it's time to move on to the next step in the pre-production. Now it might be time to create a shot list, a storyboard, you know, do character design exploration, and maybe an animatic. This is where I think a one-man band production differs quite drastically from a team collaboration. Everyone will work differently here, but as I will be working on this project for a long time, I don't want to set too much in stone, as that would for sure take away some excitement I have for the project. If I would work with several people on a project, I think it's very important to have a clear visual direction set and a plan ahead in terms of who does what and making sure that the outcome looks consistent. Here a solid storyboard and even an animatic completely makes sense, but since I don't need to present my idea to a team, working alone on this project, all I normally end up doing is, next to my script, write a somewhat detailed shot list to remind myself of the shots I had in mind while writing the story. I have a pretty clear idea in mind of what each shot might look like, but what I love about the development of a film is that that picture will over time stretch and distort as the scenes one by one develops into visual imagery as I make them. They never look exactly like you first pictured them, but that's completely fine I think, and will be the same in any production, even if it's live action or animation. I think with experience you can sort of learn what will work in terms of an edit, so I don't feel the need for an animatic either, um, you know, to see my full film before committing to it. I try to play it back in my mind and visualize as much as possible. I much rather cut down or take a shot out completely or be forced to create a shot I hadn't planned for if needed in case the edit doesn't work the way I thought it would. This keeps the whole creative process a little bit more loose and allows me to explore the film as I make it. It can be a bit risky if you're not in control, but it definitely makes me more excited about it and allows me to approach each shot with a fresher perspective. If everything is just a tick-off list that has already been developed and needs finalizing, then I think I would have a harder time marrying this project for such a long time. It's like a relationship, right? It has to be this long exploration you and your partner do together. Having a list of exactly planned out milestones for your entire future together doesn't sound overly exciting. At least not for me. I should say though that I definitely explore some designs so I know what my characters will look like and what style I'm going for before starting to work on an actual shot for the film. I'm for sure not just winging it. I think with a bit of experience we can learn what works for us and that way take some shortcuts. This covers my take on pre-production in a one-man band scenario. Remember that this is just my current way and you might find this not to work for you. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on this and how you would tackle it. In upcoming episodes I want to go over the next steps in the developments of my film. The long journey of production, sound design and music and whatever else I can come up with that allows me to spill my brain in one of these episodes. Hope this was useful, something a bit different from the past videos. Uh, stay tuned for more and feel free to like and subscribe as always. Have a good day and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.